right, we're in Lake Havasu, Arizona, and we just completed the installation for Lake Havasu Yacht Club of two 150 remanufactured Evan Roots. Uh, the club members would like to uh, run down of the engine, so I figured it would be good to show not only the club members, but everybody involved. These are 60 degree V6s. They made them from about 1991 to about 2005, which means it's an excellent motor. Manufacturers don't build motors that don't run well or come back a lot for many years. They take them off the market. So that's what we like to remanufacture. Motors that have long production runs generally are very reliable, very good engines, easy to get parts for. Everybody knows how to work on them because there's lots and lots and lots of them. So that's what we like to do. We don't like to do the oddball motors or the one-off motors. This is an air box. It basically doesn't, it keeps it a little bit quieter. Uh, it connects all the carburetors. There's six carburetors, one per each cylinder. Uh, as we said on many of the other videos, each cylinder runs almost independently on every two-stroke it has to. So we take this off just to show you stuff in there. Show you what we did. Need a little bit of a tight fit on these things. This is our pre-mix motor, so we put in mix fuel pumps there's no oil injection that's the way the customer a lot wanted it that's the way we wanted it this is a fuel strainer this is where the fuel comes in after it loops through here the strainer is not really a filter the manufacturer will call it a filter it's really a strainer um, the only purpose I like it for is I can tell you if your fuel lines falling apart because I will take this strainer off it just threads out if it's got black particulate in it, your fuel lines are falling apart. So as you see, one, two, three carburetors this side, one, two, three here. It's hard to see on the video, maybe. So six cylinders, six carburetors, all linked together. Uh, that's a very, very reliable system. If one carburetor goes bad, you're going to keep running. Unfortunately, that one cylinder will not get lubricant because the fuel is the lubricant, and it can kill the engine. Uh, another thing, to, this is a really important thing to know if you own any Johnson Evinrude engine from like 1981 and it's carbureted to about 2005 when carbureted motors started going away. This is in your, your enriching our valve. Most people know you push the key in it and it chokes it. It really enriches it. It puts raw fuel into the engine through these little hoses. There's one over here. Puts raw fuel in it. So if it's hard starting. Maybe the choke's not working. With the cover off, you should hear a little click. It just goes click, click. You don't hear it? Well, first check the wires. There's the wires that go to it. Purple and white stripe. It's attached to the key switch. But if you want to see, well, maybe my key switch is bad. Maybe that wire broke. That manually chokes it. And you run it. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Here. So you can run the motor like that. It's a big pain in the butt. Because you got to take that stupid air box cover off every time. But it's awful, awful nice to know that. It helps you tr troubleshoot a motor, too. And yeah, this one has a Schrader valve on it. It's for winterization or off-season storage. I don't know if we call it off-season or winterization because we're in Arizona. We don't have winter. This is a fuel restriction. It is a vacuum switch. If a line gets kinked, which can easily do, or get clogged with any kind of crap that can get in gas tanks, the alarm will go off. You'll know it's that because the alarm will go off only above 2,500 to 3,500 RPM, you back off and the alarm goes away. That's because that's when you're pulling the most amount of fuel. So the alarm goes off, customers call me all the time, it only goes off over 3,500, it's a fuel restriction. Well, how do you know right off the bat? And that's why. So what we do, we usually say, if you have a six gallon gas can of gas, hook that up directly, the alarm goes away, you gotta check your gas tank. It's not the motor. So. These are your trim relays over here. I don't know if you can get that. One for up, one for down. Um, it's nice to know because these are actually a Ford relay. You can get at any auto parts store. So if it's like, hey, it trims up and not down. When it's off, 
mainly doing, it's reversing the polarity. It's going, turning a positive into a negative and, a, a, that, and vice versa. So if it only goes one direction and not the other, the trim motor is good. If one of these is bad, you can also test it by just swapping them out. It's nice to have an extra one. Um, this is a unique motor. It actually has a vapor separator. Most carburetor motors do not have a vapor separator. This has a vapor separator. Don't really have many problems with them. And sometimes they start to leak. Um, I believe they did that because it's, it's really, us it's all really close to the block. It might get a little hot. Heat near a uh, fuel system sometimes will cause vapor lock. So they put that on there. Uh,